Good, whoops. <laughs> no, I hide something there. Um, good afternoon. Welcome to my broadcast. Um, this is episode number 651. And the topic today is, are you sick and tired of those lousy dates? Before I jump into that, um, first of all, let me introduce myself and we'll get started. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Actually, I'm a inspiration, an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong and actually help all women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which actually is what led to these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Today we're at episode number 651. Yesterday was interesting because it was the day that Facebook went bang. Still no explanation what happened. Hopefully days to come we'll find out. But my Facebook Live from there got stuck, so I, it's as visible, but I keep showing it's still, it's still recording 24 hours later. Something's off there. So, today hopefully should be a smooth, easy broadcast. You can follow us along and you can interact if you wish. And this is a Facebook Live in case you're wondering why you're watching this on YouTube. It starts on Facebook Live. You can interact there directly with me. I then save it to my business pages on Facebook and then put it up to my YouTube channel. So you may be watching it there, but if there are any comments, interactions, I'll attempt to repeat them on camera. So in case you're watching it there, you won't see the comments, but you can at least hear them. Make sense? So let's jump in. So welcome to my usual broadcast. It's every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually, or the yesterday because of Facebook being um, dysfunctional. <laughs> I didn't do it till a lot later, but back to normal today. Fingers crossed. So, are you sick and tired of the dating um, scene or, or the dating experience? I'm going to play with this a little bit because it's something that's been on my mind recently because um, some people I know are getting to the point where they're really done with this whole online dating matchmaking arena. And I'll speak to an experience I had in passing just to speak to the point of view of the way the matchmaking system can sorry excuse me can not work it can work but also when it cannot work so i want to give you that side of it too but also about the influence that outside experience gives us because this is the thing about dating and about anything in our lives we as human beings have autonomy over our experience that may be a maybe a hallelujah for you to hear that but the reality is we have autonomy over our experience, meaning that even in the dating scene, we can control how we receive, interact, connect, experience what happens. All well and good in theory, but for many people, the experiences happening out there govern the mood we have inside. They govern how we feel, they govern our reaction, and they govern our, they govern our experience. And that's backwards, by the way. So I'm going to give you some insights into that one level and hopefully give you some skills on the other side. First of all, the way the world is set up, we are viscerally in, immersed in it like human, as human beings, believing that the world happens to us, which is actually not true. I know it's going to sound weird, but it's not true. Frankly, our journey through this life is totally governed by what's inside. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me, I had to do that. Still persisting day after day, but it's going away soon. It's really a matter of how we choose to respond to what happens out there that governs everything. So, let me, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Let me back up a second slightly. So, we live life the way we live life. We go through things, we have great experiences, and in the area of relationship, particularly, same as in the other area, we have experiences that may be good, may be bad, depending on how we feel. The mistake that people make, not you, but other people, the mistake that people make is they believe their life is governed by what happens out there. So if the dates suck, life sucks. Versus if dates suck, different choice. And that's what I'm going to play with is moving you out of the reaction to to, res the, to the response to instead. Because reacting versus responding are two very different things. When you react to something like bad dates, you're at the mercy of those dates. You're actually, being, you're actually putting yourself in a victim place in the sense that you don't have autonomy anymore. You've given up responsibility. Now, I'm going to be careful with this because some situations where bad things happen, you can say, but it wasn't my fault. And I'm not saying it is. However, how you choose to treat yourself after that situation happens, if it's a really bad one, 
is still in your control. And even though somebody may have screwed you up on a date, and I'm using some pretty loose language here for some pretty bad dates that happen out there, you don't have to live in that influence anymore. You can be free of it. I'm really I'm talking about something that's a lot deeper than I was planning to go to, but I'll put that to the side one, one second. Now, as human beings in this world, in fact, let me, let me step up a level and be spiritual with you for a second. As spiritual beings have a human experience in this world, sometimes we don't look at life from that high enough level. We look at it from a very mundane, human, limited viewpoint, which is why we play victim to other things that happen around us. When we get cut off in traffic, we blame the other person. It's their fault and we get upset. When somebody spills coffee on you at work, you judge and blame them versus just being aware of it. You react to what happened and you become a victim of what happened. You get emotionally upset, triggered by something else. What I mean by victim is that you don't have control over your emotional response. Something bad happens out there. Again, say a car cuts you up or somebody spills coffee at work or you have a bad date and you feel badly for yourself and you feel victimized and hurt and wounded by something out of your control. The reality is though, you do have something in control, which is your ability to respond versus react. And again, I'll break that down again. So first of all, the reaction mode puts you in a place of trigger. So if something happens, you're like, oh, 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 and you fight or flight or freeze, whatever that is. But when you respond to a situation, so someone cuts you up in traffic and you in your presence of awareness of being a spiritual being and a human experience, you look at that car cutting you off and you just wish them well. Hopefully they're going to get out of your way because their driving is perhaps erratic or maybe they're in a hurry. And you can see from what happened that you don't need to be involved in that. That's a response versus a reaction. Reaction is, I'm going to chase them down and give them a piece of my mind. I'm upset with them for cutting me up and everything else. It may not be a smart move. But what if they're in a hurry because they have to get to hospital because somebody in their family got, got wounded? Or maybe they are going home because their partner, their, their, maybe it's a dry guy driving and um, their wife just calls, say, come home quickly. I think I'm going to have the baby. They're pregnant or something like that. You don't know. So to be in reaction mode, you don't even have an awareness of that. In response mode, you get to choose differently. What's this got to do with dating, you may be wondering. Funny you should ask. Let me put that in context. So in the dating arena, for a lot of people, there is a experience of going through dating like there being a ping pong ball being bounced around a ping pong table. It's an interesting analogy showed up. Let's see how it goes. By the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, my analogies pop up and sometimes they make sense and sometimes they don't. Hopefully this one will. So being in the place where you're being a ping pong ball, you have no real control of what happens. You're actually at the mercy of the ping pong bats that not hit you back and forward. And meanwhile, you just bounce between the bats. So from one experience to another experience, from one bad date to another bad date, and you don't seem to have control. That's the victim, victimized place. That's the reactive place. You don't have any control. Because when you hit a ping pong ball, it reacts to the velocity and the force of the bat and bounces down the table according to physics. There's no response there. It's a reaction to it. It's like, that happens. Sometimes if you're dating, you may feel the same way. If, however, you look at how you can respond to situations, again, like the car swerving in front of you and you just simply back off and you let them go because you know that what's happening to them isn't to do with you. On a date, if it's not working out, you get to walk away clean. Referencing what I said about my own experience, I had a date earlier this week that was through a matchmaking service that I've had some pretty interesting experiences with. I've shared about it before. And their behavior, the dating service, to provide dates has been pretty wishy-washy and sometimes almost like there was no match involved at all. It was random numbers. But this date was a very good match in the sense of complementary skill sets, complementary styles. There was no chemistry. There was no desire to connect, continue beyond it. Although we know so many people in common, we would know we're, cross, we're gonna cross paths down the road. Which was great because it meant that the criteria the dating, sorry, the matchmaking service provided was a little closer to what was matching, which is good. Now, on the date, when I first got there, my immediate thought was, She's not my type, I'm gonna leave right now. That would have been a reaction. Instead, I chose to stay, which is a decent thing to do. And we ended up having a wonderful dinner, a great conversation. We talked for like three hours and four hours. Actually, this was close to four hours. And a great time. Again, no chemistry, but great conversation. And I know we both benefited from the conversation because we responded to what happened. We both knew, 
my guess is she had the same thought I did, that we weren't going to have any, any chemistry or romantic connection, but we were going to have a great conversation, which we did, and, and enjoyed sharing some ideas and thoughts about business and other things too. That was because we responded. Now, not all the dates have been unbeen like that, just to be clear and transparent. But what I recognize more and more is that the more I respond to situations, that what happens with some situation, because, let me, sorry, let me rewind slightly. My reactive mind would have been somebody to say, forget it, I'm walking away, it's not what I'm interested in. My responsive mind, responsive perspective, actually was clear in saying, this could be interesting, let me find out what happens. And it's that interesting flavor that makes life more fun. So in your dating choices, first of all, can you be more intrigued and responsive versus, oh no, and reactive? That's a shift to start with. Second thing I want to say, <clears throat> excuse me, for the ladies especially, if you're going on dates hoping to meet somebody who feels right, all well and good. But if you want to shortcut that, you need to start inside. Now I talked earlier about how it comes from where you come from inside versus reacting to what happens out there. Well, let me just add another layer on that. As a powerful creative being that you are, ladies especially, your gift and your talent is the ability to attract things into your life. Now, maybe you haven't been attracting what you want. That's a whole other conversation we can have about what you've got wired inside because you attract regardless of what's running and regardless of what you're choosing. If you're getting bad choices, that's actually a clue that maybe your radar, your magnetic systems are misaligned. I'm being a bit complicated and technical, but I hope this makes sense. So the power you have is to realign your targeting system, for but one of a better word. Sorry, I was watching we watching the Expanse on on uh, Prime, which I love is a great show, and a lot of that language is in my head right now. So I guess it's coming out that way. Let me try another way. If you're getting dates that suck. <laughs> then maybe you can realign your viewpoint to actually create and attract dates that don't suck. Is that simple enough? So shifting the energetic from what doesn't work to what does work starts with you having a clear and honest communication with yourself to ask yourself, what am I really looking for? Because maybe you don't even know. Maybe you're actually out there dating randomly, hoping you to meet someone that fits what you don't even know as a criteria. A suggestion is you start by getting clear inside. What do you really want in partnership? What do you really want to attract? Again, ladies, your skill, your power, magnificence is the ability to attract what you want. But if you don't know what you want, you can attract a whole bunch of stuff. Hang on, let me cough again. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if you are not attracting what you want, it's time to adjust your sights, to realign, to focus differently. And by so doing, you'll change the paradigm which you play in and you actually can focus more um, intentionally where you want to go. And that's powerful. Now, I do have a couple of things up my sleeve, <laughs> sort of up my sleeve. I actually have um, a couple of ideas for you. I'll put in the links, a couple of links in the comments just to let you know that one, I have an online program called Attract the Man You Want, so it helps women get clear, if you're a woman, it's clear on your vision, your intention, your power, that'll be in the comments. And also I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me because maybe you want to talk more about what's in the way and what you're not getting. Having a clear vision can be easier once you know what you're looking for, but the thing is you have to know what you're looking for first. And also, if you're not getting a match to that, then what are you being pulled toward that's not lining up? As I mentioned earlier. So these two things, getting clear about where you want to go, but also watching what shows up as, as feedback is a key way of refining, honing, and adjusting your targeting to get what you really want. Dating is an exploration of possibility. What you really want, I trust, if you're doing that, is to find the one you want to be with. Not the perfect one, but the one you want to be with, which means it's good to know what you're looking for first. So you start there and build, and I can help you with that. So I hope this has made some sense to you, and there's some keys and some tips in here that will give you some value. If you feel like this has been a value to you, you want to share it with your friends, please do so. Um, again, I'll put links in the comments for the two things I mentioned. This is something you can change. You have the power to change your choices, the power to shift your vibration, the power to choose and respond from a higher place than maybe you've done up to this point. The good thing is you can do this without my help. You can just explore and see what happens. So try it out and see. 
If you have any questions or thoughts about this broadcast, please put them in the comments below. Um, I'll give you the links where you can find my replay so you know to watch the other ones. Um, this is a 5 p.m. Pacific time broadcast every day when systems are working, when Facebook doesn't crash, when other things are working too. So I, I'll be here again tomorrow at the same time. Um, if you haven't seen me before, my broadcasts are on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can watch the replays on my business page, which is barryselby.author. And also on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my channel, which is Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. If you want to help in this area, you can reach out to me. You can message me. I'll put links in the comments, as I mentioned, to give you some support. And uh, be willing to respond versus react in every area of your life and see what happens. You might find you have more power than you realized. My work in a lot of ways is helping you find your power in love, in life, everywhere. That's why I do this broadcast. So I'll see you again tomorrow for number 652. We'll see what topic that is. I wish you a pleasant evening. Take care of yourself. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.